Hello everybody, I am your host, Dr. Darkspawn, naturally, and welcome. Welcome to a bit of a sensitive video that hits me right in the heart. I want to say as many good things as I can about Meteor Maker. I absolutely love the game, I love the team that made this. But I'm, we're going to have to be honest for a moment here. We're going to have to talk about the state of Meteor Maker. And, you know, I'll give my opinion on it as well, to just tie it all together. Um, now let's get started. Uh, Bit Your Maker is a first-person shooter with a $30-$35 price tag. It's a community-driven game, and that's very important for this. The game concept is great in the way that it fosters creativity, and it's very unique. Like uh, Mighty Quest for Epic Loot, the old PC game. Uh, you can imagine if you could combine Mighty Quest with Doom. That's pretty much what Meteor Maker is right now, right? And just like Mighty Quest, it's really creative with how you can use your traps, with how you can build, with how you can experiment, and really just foster so much creativity. Or the, the idea of it fosters so much creativity. We'll get back on that and why it doesn't actually really promote a lot of creativity but right now there's only a small active player base for meet your maker i had a look on steam db charts and yeah unfortunately the peak was only 3300 players on steam and a daily peak is roughly around 700 and if you go about four days ago the peak was 1100 so it's 1100 players so from launch on steam it's lost 66 percent of its player base obviously you know that's normal not really big surprise there most games have that but the retention on this is not looking great at all in that it's constantly losing massive percentages of its player base the peak is dropping by a hundred or so a day or you know staying very stable if it's not dropping but it's definitely not even going up not even for a second um yeah the game released on april 4th so that's about just over three weeks ago it's available on xbox game pass and ps plus if i'm not mistaken and Looking at the stats, uh, Steam estimates that roughly about 24,000 people are following it and they don't all own the game naturally, so we can assume that there's like th maybe 30, 32,000 people that own the game, some of them don't follow the game, etc. But if we're looking at active players, we can probably see there's only around 4,000 to 8,000 players across all the platforms. From all the players on Xbox, from all the players on PlayStation, and the amount of outposts we see, the amount of rating that you see on your outpost, it can't be more than 8,000, definitely. So it's probably around 6K to 8K players. So we can extrapolate this information, and you know, because they're consistently losing such a large percentage of their player base, this means much fewer raids, it means less outposts in matchmaking. And yeah, that's going to bring me to my next point that I want to talk about a bit is outposts. So outposts reward brutality and getting kills. And there's very little incentive to make outposts fun. There's no reward for having a fun outpost. It just needs to get as many kills as possible. If that means you dress it up a little bit at the front to make it look more appealing to players, then yeah, that makes it more brutal. That does not make it more fun. A fun outpost is really difficult to make, but the focus isn't even trying to make a fun outpost. Most of the outposts all just try and get as many kills as they can, or the player to quit. Because that means they get a higher kill ratio, and it makes them feel better about the outpost, right? Um, but yeah, there's very little incentive to make outposts fun, because the only thing that a fun outpost gets over a brutal outpost is that it gets the accolade fun, or artistic or etc it doesn't get normally brutal or ingenious but that's that's it accolades that's the only thing you get a few extra prestige points here and there no other gains um yeah there's a lot of problems with outposts especially 
the main one being the problem with abandoning from raiders so if a raider all their fours or they just disconnect they disconnect their router um this removes the kills that you got and all prestige points that that outpost would have gotten from those kills and makes it so that your outpost loses kill ratio so it loses kill ratio it doesn't get the prestige points and it gets reset in the matchmaking queue for its um reset in the matchmaking queue for its visibility so they added a new matchmaking update where outposts with fewer raids get higher visibility in the algorithm that they run to show outposts and now that you've gotten a raid it counts as a raid but you got no prestige points for it in other words you're gonna get a much lower probability of actually prestiging outposts to a higher level instead of just resetting them which is nuts because that means that players can actively gatekeep you if they alter for your base they can go into your base, they can take all your tombs, die a thousand times, but alt F4, and then you get nothing for it. That's a big, big problem. Uh, I'll get to the bugs as well in a second. But uh, there's been very little communication from the devs at all, and there's been absolutely no bug fixing. Zero. Not a single bug except the replay system, but that's more like a complete overhaul at this point. There wasn't really a replay system that was in the game. You could see three replays, and if you scroll down, every replay just duplicated itself. That was a bug from the beta. So if we're going on bugs that were fixed from release, I'm not going to include that one. But yeah, since release, there's been like no bug fixing, and there's only been like tweaks to matchmaking, which was what I mentioned earlier. A few of the massive, massive bugs in the game right now are really like game-breaking experiences. There's a bug with suits where if you join a co-op partner that's really laggy, you could lose all your bio links on the suit. So if you've played 300 hours, you've maxed out everything on that suit, and your friend is level one, he hasn't joined, he has only joined the first raid, and he hasn't upgraded anything. Your loadout switches to whatever the base loadout was that he was using at like level one upgrades for every weapon that you have equipped that was changed. So if you were using the Vault Lancer and a sword. Your Vault Lancer would lose its upgrades, and your Sword would lose its upgrades. But the upgrades you had for the Shield, for example, and the Sledge would still remain. And you're unable to equip, equip um, Biolinks into the second and third slot for that suit you now. So now you have one passive on the suit, and it's effectively you know, unusable for raiding Brutals, because you lose so many perks, you lose so many talents, you lose all these extra things... And you get nothing from it. It's not like it's a challenge mode or anything. Your suit just becomes unusable. So you have to upgrade the other one, max them out to the highest level, and only then can you then you only use one suit and change the mods in between the suit. But that's a real chore, and you know this bug should definitely get fixed ASAP. I've had this bug. Multiple of you guys in the comments and on the community Discord have told me that you've got this bug. So it's a big problem, and it's very game-breaking. There's a bug with second wave corrosives that's been making the rounds, which is also another massive, massive problem. Because traps aren't supposed to be able to see through corrosive cubes, but if you take a corrosive cube, you make it second wave, then they can see through it. And this has been exploited to such an extent that entire outposts have used 4,000, 4,000 plus capacity just exploiting this one bug in the game and it doesn't make outposts fun it makes them nearly undoable without being able to see what's coming and where it it's it's just not fun for anybody involved trying to actually run that now there's been a bug that's uh, new to the release that wasn't there in the beta in that splatter doesn't work for corrosives and bolt shots um, so a bolt shot would shoot its bolts through the corrosive cube and it doesn't make any splatter. Now, we know this is a bug and that, you know, it's not intended for it to be removed because if you put a bolt shot slanted pointing downwards on a slanted block with a corrosive below it, you trigger the bolt shot, it then causes splatter to shoot up but then it hits the top of the bolt shot. So it's effectively useless but you can get it to work in one very, very specific case. 
but it's useless. Um, that's a bug. It, it does take away a lot of the freedom with using corrosives and splatter especially. Um, there's a bug with your sword where sometimes if you go through the animations of swinging your sword too quickly and using your grapple and your second sword if you're using both swords it could freeze your animation and your sword will just stay in your hand and it won't activate you will not lunge to whatever you're trying to hit and you won't break the trap that you're trying to hit effectively killing you in a lot of cases this is grab a grapple bug where if you grapple to something sometimes the grapple just disappears it's very unresponsive sometimes um, or sometimes it hits an object and then it just like flies off into the distance and it's like huh where's my grapple go uh, and you know if, in, if you're in a specific position where you really needed to move and this happens it does kill you and can be very frustrating to come across uh, there's also still a bug from the beta with bolt shot and vault lancer projectiles where if you shoot them or the bolt shot projectiles come towards you the projectile kind of curves around whatever it was trying to hit uh, so on a vault lancer you would shoot towards the top of a piston for example and it would like fly off into a random direction and hit a wall instead of destroying the piston leaving the trap unharmed and effectively you at minus one bolt for bolt shots these would shoot at you and you would move like next to a wall they would kind of like as soon as they would hit you they would do like curve around your character's polygon i guess and miss you and then just continue going straight after that so yeah that's also a problem that is still in the game there is a bug with outpost resource collection extremely extremely demotivating for boulders especially so if you go into an outpost, let's say you've got five active outposts, you go in, you pick up resources, and then you go into your next base to pick up those resources. The resources will diminish, and after every pickup, you will get less and less synthite and parts for the consecutive pickups, until they only give you one each instead of five or twenty synthite and parts per pickup. So uh, yeah, big problem there that is solved by exiting the game and relaunching the game again that kind of resets some kind of cache or check that the game has for that but right now it's a problem for people that don't know about this because it reduces their synthite and part gains from kills to get in their outposts significantly like massively um there are some bugs as well with plasma sentinels where plasma sentinels don't really have a difficulty rating if you place them away from directly next to on harvey's path so if you place 50 plasma sentinels above harvey's pathway all of them that have vision over harvey's pathway i had this bug in my video about trap difficulty rating as well the sentinels don't actually add anything to the difficulty rating even though you've used four and a half thousand capacity just putting sentinels down so that's definitely a bug um there is also a bug where you can place traps outside of the building area a lot of you've probably encountered this where harvey gets killed by a piston outside the buildable area now this is a bug we know this because every single other piston in the game no matter where you put it how you put it down harvey either stops for the piston or the piston stops for harvey or both actually and the pistons are not intended to kill hobby so anyone using this it is an exploit you have no defense against my argument stop trying to justify it okay you're abusing an exploit um and yeah the game is actually just very unstable there's lots of crashes especially on outposts that use a lot of second wave corrosive cubes and glass blocks so there's some instability but that's not really a very big game breaker it's just a minor that i've got put up so that kind of like deals with the state of the game you know it's it's very buggy but it's only been three weeks in release which is fine you know it's not the end of the world they've got lots of chances to kind of reel this cat in and try and make it as good as it can be you know so like moving on we can talk a little bit about the social media presence of the game and the you know the developers there's been almost no communication about you know new new game features or hot fixes so people that want to see where the game is going what the game is going to become they have no information they just have a picture that has a roadmap of wait till june that's pretty much what they have or july i'm not sure. i think it's june yeah i think it's june it's next month um 
yeah, they've also on their Twitter account recently been having a bit of activity where they reach out to a creator here and there, but it's like 30 seconds of a clip, 40 seconds of a clip with one person linked in the Twitter, but nothing actually from the devs themselves besides some other posts that I'll get to in a minute. Uh, they did run a competition which was called the Devious Duos, but honestly the competition was a complete and utter joke. The players that were involved in this competition after like what a week and a half of the game being released were like level 6 and level 9 in the semi-finals of this event. So they have played, they barely played the game, they didn't know how the game functioned, they didn't know how to use the tools that they were using in the game and had very little experience and drive to create more content for the game because they haven't played it. They don't know what the game is all about, they just know that okay today's the competition day, we're going in for this. And not to talk bad about these players, 100% go, go support them for you know the games that they play, but Meet Your Maker isn't their main game. right? They're not here to really support Meet Your Maker as much as they are there because they're obligated to since they got enrolled into this competition. If they felt like they really wanted to support it, they would have leveled, they would have you know prepared for the competition, they would have tried to make the gameplay seem representative of what was actually in the game. Um, and in this competition, they used the exploit with the Death Piston to kill Harvey outside of the building area. So in the official Meteor Maker competition, the Devious Duos, at multiple points, they used pistons to kill Harvey and exploit and, you know, nobody batted an eye against it. You know, they just did it because Chad said do it and, you know, obviously the people that did it in the competition, the contestants, didn't really know what it was. They just knew that, oh wow, you can kill Harvey, that's great. I guess I'll do that to mess with my opponents. But yeah, other than that, it was a very bad representation of gameplay. So every everybody that's, you know, joining the stream, looking at this competition, thinking, oh, what's this game? What's new? What's What kind of gameplay can I expect from this? Had to look at a guy level 6, not use one of his weapons, and grapple around a room for 6 minutes and then just die sticking to the roof the whole time like spider-man or getting lost in a three corridor outpost for 20 minutes which to be fair if you haven't played the game i can understand why you would get lost but if you've put at least five hours in if you put at least 10 hours in 20 30 40 at about 60 you know how to spot a fake path at about 80 or 100 you should be able to at least you know have some bearing on which way is forward which way is backward this team went into the room again i'm not bad mouthing these players they had very little time in the game they weren't very good at the game you know but again that's just because they didn't play it much and you know they tried their best but unfortunately them trying their best isn't a good representation of what the game can do and of the potential that the game has with its movement system and the potential that it has with the tools and weapons that were given to it and overall it was just pretty boring to watch somebody get lost in a three corridor hallway it wasn't even a maze it wasn't even a complex design it had three hallways one of them was the correct one and two of them were wrong and they got lost in it for 18 of the 20 minutes and they had about two minutes of gameplay in between it was I'm exaggerating a little bit now, but it was quite the spectacle to witness. And as a new player looking at these kinds of things, you're going to think, wow, this game isn't really that great because this is what the game is. You know, they're not seeing some hardcore speedrunner do the game and then explain what they're doing while they're speedrunning. They're not seeing people use tools in different ways. They're not seeing the potential of the game. So, yeah, it's very bad marketing. It kind of reminds me like IGN and Redfall, where the gameplay was extremely erratic. Nothing made sense. None of the gameplay was, you know, presented in a really great way. They just, you know, didn't really care. They made, they made a quick clip of, you know, some gameplay and, you know, IGN just released that. And it hurt Redfall's reputation and its popularity quite a bit. So I just don't want to see something similar to that happen to Meet Your Maker. I would suggest to the devs 
and you know the people in charge of marketing to choose people that really delve into the game and that can better represent what the game actually offers as even as a new player experience right if you buy the game on day one and you don't play it for six days and then on the seventh day you play it to like level six which is to be honest i think like an hour and a half of gameplay if you're like really going at outposts then are you really supposed to be in this tournament? Are you really supposed to, you know, do these kinds of things? Or is behavior and the devs from Meet Your Maker really, you know, comfortable with them representing the game in the first official tournament run by them for Meet Your Maker? That will be the, probably the most amount of players they'll see for a while looking at the content. So yeah, a little bit, a little bit iffy on that. Um, it's, it's not great for the social media presence that they have in the representation of the game. Um, other than that, in terms of the social media that they've been do doing, the Twitter posts that I mentioned before, um, there are, were some competitions that they were like saying, like, represent this new decoration pack. But there were no rewards for it, of course, so there's no incentive to like really do anything about it. Um, and generally underwhelming nobody looked at the post nobody even looked at the posts below like 18 or 20 people viewed the outposts that were you know shown to be submitted in that tweet so again very little incentive nobody's going to care too much if they don't have a reason to care about it other than you know just for interest's sake um, there's also a lot of posts that they make where they just talk about a single mod and they pretty much just copy paste the in-game description about a mod or a guard on their twitter account you know to like make it seem like they're really active with a lot of twitter posts um like there's a post that talks about second wave traps and it pretty much just says this is a second wave trap it appears after you take the gen mat and then it's got a, a, a 10 clip 10 second video about it like saying that this is this is how it looks and if you see it happen you can you know destroy it after you pick up the gem at that's it so a lot of those things are very uninspired and uninformative because anybody that's playing the game is going to see the in-game description anyway rather use your twitter feed and the posts that you make in a creative way by offering some incentive or you know showing a really cool trap combination or you know some information that isn't just directly out of the in-game description like honestly i can walk into the game and i can go into two menus and i can get all the information they posted in 10 days of tweets about guards hollow cubes and mods it takes me five minutes to do that right but if they just describe it it's not going to do anything however if they like show it in a great example a great combination much better example really so make some of the posts maybe informative would be a, you know a great step in the right direction but for now a lot of it feels uninformative and uninspired right it's just the same type of thing over and over and we already all know what this means so we're going to see that it's something we already know and we're not going to care about anything like that in the future so it just creates this kind of standard that you measure all of the twitter posts that they make by um for the social media again they're not really partnered with any big streamers to make specifically only meet your maker content this this just adds to the low visibility that the game has that it's not so popular because they don't have a specific guy that they've taken him and they've said listen we want you to represent the game because you know all of these things you're an expert you've come we can see that you've committed yourself to this for example and we would like to officially make you meet your maker partner for example fantastic idea partner with him put him in a position where you like pay him a little bit of money or something or you know help promote their channel and then they make an heck of a lot of meet you maker content now i've seen that they have some content with some other creators in before but they're not really the main game isn't really meet your maker they play other games and variety content but there's no meet your maker streamer that meet that they recognize as 
one of the big guns you know that's part of the official guys recognized by media maker to be one of the greats and uh, yeah the overall row presence isn't just attributed because of that it's because there's nothing that really pulls players towards the game again that comes back to the visibility the partner program that i mentioned and you know just the representations of the game up until this point i know the game is still very young but it needs exposure it's a community driven game it's community based so if there's no players playing the game then you won't have any support for the game and the people playing the game won't have bases to raid and the people building won't have bases to raid either okay i'm gonna scratch that i know the game is still young uh, but it really really needs exposure critically at this point or it risks losing massive amounts of potential players and funding and support for the game like it's such a great game it's such a great concept but because it doesn't have that much exposure it doesn't have a large player base it really does limit the future of the game immensely so you know it's it, it definitely needs some help in that aspect regardless of how they choose to do it it needs exposure this is especially important because the game is community driven, right? And if the amount of players goes down, that affects the experience of all the players in the game itself. Because if there are no raiders or builders, the game's going to feel dead. You're going to see the same type of base every single time you go into the matchmaking. Or when you build a base, every build that you make is going to cater for one type of player because every raider runs the exact same gear and the exact same consumables all the bases you make are going to feel similar or all the bases that you raid are going to feel similar this is especially important because the game is community driven and the number of players affects the experience of all the players that are still currently active in the game if you have fewer people raiding the builders are going to feel less and less incentivized to build because they're not getting any raids if you have fewer people building then there's going to be less bases and less creative bases that feel different for the raiders to do and that's going to mean the raiders have bases that all feel the same to raid and it's become extremely monotonous for them so you definitely need a lot of players to get a lot of variability in there otherwise the gameplay loop is just going to be the exact same bases all the time and nobody's going to be doing raiding it's just going to feel boring and monotonous yeah that brings me to my next point the amount of synthite that are required for outposts now outposts require a lot of synthite this forces players to raid to get synthite because you can't get enough just by having a base maybe for one especially but you know, the game needs a mechanic anyway to force you to raid because how else are you going to get people to raid just because some bases are fun? No, you need to get the material to make your own bases and upgrade your own mods and purchase your own traps because you want those, right? That's how you progress in the game. So it's, it's great that the game has synthite and the way that it works is great, but its implementation is very detrimental to the game's lifespan right now the rewards are super low and even kills in your outposts are unrewarding without even you know counting the diminishing returns from the bug that i've mentioned earlier if you got maximum amount of resources from every kill that you got it would still be extremely unrewarding even to have five outposts active and you would get about let's say you get a few raids you would get let's say you get 10 raids you might get 80 synthite from all those people raiding your base it obviously depends on how much they die but you know i'm just using some average values that i've seen on some of my outposts recently as compared to on launch on launch i got 300 400 every time i logged in on that outpost and it was great but now you get 80 so there's very very little of synthite going around 
Um, yeah, so the lack of synthide further limits your creativity by reducing your potential outposts. Let's say you have 9,000 gen mat, which is the value on the bottom of your outpost with 4,500 capacity. Then your outpost costs a thousand synthite just to get the burial ground. And, you know, you haven't even started building, you haven't bought a single mod for a trap, and you haven't even prestiged it once. And then in comparison to that, a small outpost with a 750 capacity and 4500 gen mat costs 600 synthite so an outpost will always cost around 550 to 600 minimum synthite up until a thousand synthite just to buy the plot to build the base on so um let's say that you prestige level 1 to 10 it starts at 600 and it increases by 50 prestige every single time that you go to the next rank so prestige 1 is 600 prestige 2 costs 650 prestige 3 costs 700 that means um you're not guaranteed to prestige as well because of the low amount of raiders and prestige points you get which is just you know them giving accolades or dying so you're not always going to be guaranteed to prestige, so there's an extra 700 or 800 synthite that you need to pay to reset that prestige level. And it also depletes all your prestige points. It takes you back to zero and has you to restart that entire prestige level without any carryover points you might have had from like prestige one, you got 500 prestige points, but it costs 400. Now you've got 100 carrying over onto the next prestige. Oh, it had to reset. Guess it's going back down to zero now, and it's going to be even more difficult to prestige your base to the next level. Effectively using, you know, 700, 800 synthite without getting your base to go to a higher level. So it really, it becomes very expensive to try and get a base to uh, to prestige 10. Now, if we can make an example out of these values that I've shown for the outpost building and the economy it requires 9,000 roughly about 9,000 to 10,000 synthite to get an outpost to prestige 10 after buying it and that is if you don't reset it even once with every reset being almost a thousand synthite each and you get about uh, let's say if you go raiding right you get a hundred synthite on average from a brutal outpost when you raid it and that is if you get all three tombs now sometimes you can get 150 sometimes you can get 125 sometimes you can get 75 but on average you get roughly about a hundred um, so that means you would need to raid like 900 brutals to get an outpost to prestige 10 and you know but of course this doesn't include the daily synthite rewards that you get your rewards from leveling up your chimera or your level up rewards or rewards for doing three champion outposts but let's include those right so if you only do brutal maps and you level up once every 18 brutals it's not guaranteed that you get synthite on each one of these levels you get by the way you get 125 synthite for every six brutals in other words every three champion bases and you upgrade all five of your advisors after like eight brutals you get like one and a half of a chimera level which is seven and a half of those little bars that the chimera has beneath it so for doing 18 brutals you would get 75 from the daily you would get 250 from your character level you would get three chimera levels for 750 and from all the tombs and the rewards for you know destroying the traps you would get 1800 from doing 18 brutals so after it's assuming you get all the tombs you get about 2875 synthite for doing 18 brutals right so this is assuming that you don't abandon a raid and that you know let's say a raid takes you 10 minutes it takes you three hours to raid 18 brutals and that's if you're really really good at the game just to get 2875 synthite so that means that for three hours of hardcore raiding you're able to buy one outpost with maximum stats 4500 capacity and 9000 gen mad and you're able to prestige it three times only three times 
So this kind of economy means that no casual players are going to get short-term progression because they're gated by Synthite at some point during this whole process. Synthite is used for a massive amount of the boosts, upgrades, and you know acquisition of things in the game. And this is only for one outpost. This doesn't even count the Synthite that you need to prestige. The other four bases that you can potentially have active. You're able to have five active outposts and it should cost you roughly three and a half to three point two thousand synthite every 24 hours so you need to spend at least like three and a half to four hours every day raiding and successfully raiding at that otherwise you won't be able to keep your outposts active so this is a great problem a big problem with the game so you've got so many limits you've got limits on the amount of active outposts you can have limits on the amount of synthite uh, prestige that you need to pay that you need to pay a lot so that also limits your income you've got a burial sites costing a massive amount of synthite and all of these things combine and really kill the creative drive for a lot of players to make good outposts so this leads to you like feeling forced to raid maybe you're not a player that really likes to raid so raiding then starts to feel like a chore instead of you choosing to raid when you want to raid because it's fun every now and then now you're forced to raid you have to raid otherwise you can't have outposts active and you like building more right this combines you know with some of the previous aspects mentioned and turns into a lot of copy paste bases and spamming everywhere on the active matchmaking now there's a lot of these where they just take traps and they put them on every wall in a room and you know they've oh, they don't really care the base is not going to get raiders or prestigious anyway they don't really mind it leads to a lot of raiding them becoming unfun because these bases are flooding the matchmaking and you know it, it makes raiding extremely unfun especially if you're feeling forced to raid as well to get that bit of synthite that you need to get over the 3.5k mark and then you're broke then for four hours tomorrow you've got to come back and you've got to run the same bases running the exact same trap combos all spamming plasma sentinels or all spamming incinerators with pistons you name it so that can really influence players and how they approach the game and the community especially if the players are casual because they'll be encountering this synthite gating at a much earlier point in time right so the outpost spamming and etc are largely influenced by um, what an outpost gets rewarded for which is for getting kills which means that every outpost is going to feel very similar because their goal is just to kill you it's not to be fun and you know casual players don't really have time to experiment or time to fail so they just watch a youtube video and go oh this is effective i'll copy this or this guy used this combo i'll copy that i mean it's great that people can get these kinds of ideas from others it promotes a type of group creativity but if they just take it and they copy paste it they don't put it in different layouts they don't do anything with it they just copy paste it because they're casual they don't care and you get a thousand of these bases compared to the 50 bases that are actually using original concepts a lot of the game is going to feel very monotonous similar and honestly just very lackluster and this is one of the biggest problems in the game as well so yeah as I mentioned before casual players can't really afford to mess up with the steep learning curve of how to build good base because it's expensive in terms of synthite they don't have a lot of synthite um, you know maybe it could also be because of laziness that they don't really either care about building or you know they can't spend two and a half hours building a good base or coming up with ideas that they just copy paste stuff but whatever the reason there's a lot of that going around at the moment yeah that's enough about the state of the game we can talk a bit about what does media make a need what does it need it needs a ton of exposure it needs to get out there and it needs to pair up with partners it needs to pair up with content creators that are hungry for the game that want to produce meet your maker focused content that really want to experiment with some ideas they need competitions they need clearer rewards for these competitions they need some incentivization on 
their side to the players like you get a unique cosmetic or perhaps you get uh, some in-game synthite resources that might be a really great deal considering how the economy is looking at the moment you know they need better media presence they need a better representation of what the gameplay is so that new players don't look at it and you know they see a gross misrepresentation of what the game can be and how some mechanics work right because that's going to put a lot of players off if they do experience that uh, they should get more rewards from leveling or maybe they should lower the leveling requirements uh, a level going from level one to two costs you 50,000 XP and going from level 134 to 135 is going to cost you 50,000 XP as well it's the exact same XP requirement no matter what your level is and you know maybe reduce it for the earlier levels but keep the rewards the same or increase the rewards for you know getting to a higher level so a level provides you what like 250 synthite and I do think it stays the same throughout the whole process where every level rewards you the exact same amount of a reward. It just varies which reward it gives you. Sometimes it gives you cells, sometimes it gives you parts, and sometimes it gives you synthite. So it's not even guaranteed. So maybe they can rework the rewards from leveling and that should solve the mid-game experience of someone playing the game that might experience some kind of synthite gating. You know, that's maybe something that they really need. Um, something I can definitely say about the game is that the gameplay feels really good and the gameplay feels very fun so I can tell that this is a passion project but the gameplay loop so the gameplay is really good the game handles really well but the loop of it is less well done um, it relies a lot of on players that are influenced by a synthite gating approach it's like th they have a budget they can only get so much synthite they only have so many hours in the day to raid bases eventually they're going to run out of it right and they need to make sure that they get the most amount of synthite as they possibly can and you know that affects the gameplay loop in a community driven game like this they make an outpost that is really bad just focused on killing the player spam every block using every type of copy paste tactic there is it's not good it's not fun as a raider doesn't feel fun and it really affects the quality of the gameplay loop a lot so some incentive to perhaps build bases in different ways or perhaps some ways to spice up the creativity or reduce the spam factor in some bases could be great to improve the effectiveness of the gameplay loop and its potential of keeping players in the game another really great thing that i think meet your maker needs is an in-game party finder for players in your region this will try and encourage co-op and it'll get some community interaction going and it can help some casual players like pair up with pros in the area now co-op is peer-to-peer -peer, that's why i say it needs to be like region locked um, for the region that you know you're being ranked with so the game split into i don't know how many regions but in terms of ranking i'm 172nd in masters but somebody else could be level 500 and somethings in master but they just reached master when i reached master i was level i was position 134 and someone else would be position 500 so those regions already exist they just need to put some kind of in-game party finder bit for it that they connect with um, and yeah because it's peer-to-peer -peer, there's a lot of lag if you connect to people outside of your region so there has to be some limits on it otherwise it's not going to be an enjoyable experience you know <sighs> it needs bug fixes it it needs to make sure that all these bugs these massive game breaking problems get addressed as soon as possible because it's deterring probably a massive portion of the community at this point and they need to communicate worthwhile information about the game's life and the state of the game right now all they're doing is telling me in-game information about a holocube or a guard that can have more than one mod on him like i already know all these things but what about meet your maker what's meet your maker doing what's the game doing how is the game faring are there any really great outposts that the devs ran while raiding did they find creative ideas ways that were implemented or they showcasing those do they have a competition you know something along the lines of what is the state of the game and what about the game's life 
what is the and you know why is it important help us please tell us something about the game like it really needs that because right now it, all, all thing we're staring at is the darkness we know absolutely nothing because you're not telling us nothing and that doesn't exactly foster confidence in the target audience about a game that they paid 30 to 35 dollars for so yeah i think we deserve at least that much and you know some kind of patch notes would be great as well to just you know show us that some things have been addressed even something as small as patch notes could be a massive um information bomb about the game's lifetime like you know it can be used in a very effective way so that's maybe an idea i hope that they've seen this and they like take some of this advice to heart because i really want to see this game succeed obviously my advice is not necessarily the best advice this is just my opinion on the game and you know the state of the game based on what i've observed and what i've seen in the community discord so yeah, if the devs can even do half of this, it's going to be a game changer for the player count. And the player's mentality towards the dev team and the game will also massively change. It might even also change towards the company itself. Like they've had some oopsies in Dead by Daylight, but they can fix all of that and, you know, make Meet Your Maker excel for the better. And if these things happen, maybe it even affects the way that builders build bases like a lot of these mostly raider mains don't build very intuitive bases and just copy paste of course there are a lot of builder mains as well that copy paste not pointing any fingers but that might change the way that people approach base building so i've seen a lot of people blocking tombs and using exploits and spamming certain things effectively blocking you from getting the rewards from tombs or you know unable to see where harvey goes in a maze base that has 700 entrances and 800 meter long harvey paths or a base that has 4100 capacity in one room pointing at you at every point and the room is a 10 by 10 block so these types of kill boxes and things maybe people will be less inclined to build them if they see that the mentality of everybody changes towards the game, that it gets more support, that it gets more love, that it gets more, um, not notoriety, but more like presence, and that it kind of encourages a really nice and friendly type of environment instead of, I need as many kills, and if I don't get kills, I don't get to keep an outpost, and if I don't get to keep an outpost, there wouldn't be a reason for me to have bought this game. I wasted $30 if I didn't do that, you know. Some people are going to think like that, and um, it's really going to increase their drive to not make it a fun experience, but a resource-rewarding experience. But yeah, I hope the devs see this again, um, that we get some awareness of these topics. Tell me in the comments below if, you know, you agreed with some of these points. Obviously, I'm not omnipotent, and um, again, just my opinion, but feel free to add your opinions below. And you know, if you agree with some of the things, let's hope they can see the video, that they can you know, like get some of this feedback, because right now there's no channel to really communicate directly and efficiently. A lot of the support is a bit timed, and not everyone's getting addressed, though with bug tickets I have been getting addressed quite a lot. Um, I've reported some of these bugs and they've replied for me on these bugs and topics um so yeah hopefully they see it and they can you know take something positive from this i really love the game i love the team i love this project i love the idea so so much i want to see this game succeed from the very bottom of my heart and honestly i love it i love it top to bottom front to back and i love the community in the meet your maker community discord as well extremely passionate about this they really want to see it succeed and I think I speak for all of us when I say that we want some change. We want to see some improvement, please. We want to see this be a game that succeeds and becomes extremely popular. This can only help you. Behavior, meet your maker game team. Please, guys, from the bottom of my heart, I'm asking you guys to please address this. And ladies, too, I guess. I don't want to discriminate. Um, it would be 
absolutely fantastic if this can become one of the greats. It has the potential. It has the soul of a really good game and it deserves to be treated better. Now I can treat it better, but I can maybe help you treat it better. I hope this video helped and I hope you liked it. Thank you so much everybody for watching. I've been your host, Dr. Darkspawn, and you've been fantastic. Take care everybody.